Hey guys, it's Northern Lion back here to play Terraria, this time for real. So this is going to be a full, or well, we'll see how long it is, a let's play of Terraria. The retail version just came out on Steam yesterday for the low, low price of $9.99, at least temporarily. The reason this game is getting, you know, actually more buzz than most indie games get is that it's kind of been marketed as the 2D version of Minecraft, and the more I play it, the more I find that that kind of, um... Comparison is a little bit superficial. This game actually has a lot of depth to it that Minecraft does not have. I mean, a more, wider variety of items and recipes, but also, it's a lot more of an adventure game, or even you could call it a fantasy type game. So this is a let's play for two reasons. One is, I know it's going to appeal to a lot of you because this game is getting huge buzz right now. And for those of you who haven't heard of it, I hope this encourages you to pick it up. Well worth the $10 asking price right now. And the other reason is, the game is so deep and so complex that, you know, it would be nice to have a little bit of a tutorial series. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm just going to click on single player here and do a little character creation. So you can see you can adjust a few things about yourself, like hair color, eyes, skin, and clothes. I'm not too concerned about the character creation side of things, because they don't have any bald, badass Jason Statham style, so naturally, what would I look like? Meanwhile, I'm sitting here actually looking like a, a more impoverished version of Moby. Anyway, create. Of course, my character name will be Northern Lion. We'll click on him there, and then we'll create a world, and we'll make a medium-sized world, and we'll just call it Let's Play... Terraria. And as with Minecraft, the worlds are procedurally generated, but they actually take a little longer to generate in Terraria because apparently every single block is rendered, which is not how it works in Minecraft. But again, I'm a, I'm a total ignoramus when it comes to anything to do with computer programming or game programming. Let's just accept and I'll see you guys when the world starts and we'll figure out how to survive our first day in Terraria. Alright, so the game is loaded and uh, probably the first thing you'll notice is that we've got this guy along with us. He's basically help, so we can talk to him and he'll give us some clues. Uh, but no, I don't really need your help right now, buddy. The other thing you'll notice is that we actually start with two tools. One is an axe, and one is a pick. So, we're gonna use our pick and harvest this mushroom, which will give us a little bit of health, and then we're gonna start looking for wood, which, you know, sounds like what my mom does on a typical Thursday night. So you can see cutting down trees is actually a lot easier in this than it is in Minecraft. I'm gonna try to keep those Minecraft comparisons to a minimum, because I know people get annoyed with it, especially because the more you play the game, the more you realize that this is not really, uh... It's Minecraft-inspired, absolutely, but it's definitely not, like, just a 2D version of Minecraft. So you can see there's a lot of minerals out here, some stone, some copper. I'm gonna take the mi time to mine this copper, but really the first thing we want to do is get some more wood so we can build a shelter somewhere. And if this desert looks like it's gonna stretch on, kind of ad infinitum... Ooh, which it does... We're gonna move back and head back to the uh, the lake. And hopefully the lake won't stretch on too far so I can get past that, because water is actually uh, a pretty real obstacle. And you can see here we've actually got our first enemy, and this is a slime. So, uh, you know, unlike in Minecraft, you have to deal a lot more with enemies during the daytime, because enemies like slimes in particular spawn. The good news is, slimes actually give you gel, and gel is used uh, kind of like coal in that game. So you can use gel to make torches, which is absolutely essential if you want to survive, of course. Well, not if you want to survive, but if you want to do any kind of serious exploring, then it's it's essential. Let's see, can I actually get up here? I can't. Let's try to build a, build a staircase for ourselves. Oh, what just happened? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not quite sure what went down there. I guess it's trying to penalize me from uh, just building a staircase for myself. Fair play. Alright, let's see. Can I get up there now? Okay. I think I can make it now if I just do things properly. Actually, what we've uncovered here is uh, a little bit of an underground cavern. And by breaking open these pots that are randomly scattered, I should get some pretty good items. So let's break open this one and see what we get. Smash it open there. Can't see, it looks like I got some coins. I'll explain coins a little later. Maybe not even in this video, but suffice to say coins are valuable. I'll definitely make a note to explore that uh, cavern a little bit more uh, more fully once we actually get set up a little bit here. So I'm going to build myself another staircase and see if I can climb up a little bit higher. This is actually really uh, not a great idea because when you die, you respawn uh, at the... Uh, at, at your, uh, your spawn point, like in Minecraft. So this is going to be quite a journey for me, but, you know, I'll just try not to die. It's worth it to get some of this wood up here. So mushrooms that I harvested before, I'm going to use those now for health, because I inexplicably took damage back there. So there's one, and then we'll start chopping this tree down. You can see I still don't have a lot of health, and actually, one of the things about this game that's a little bit different is that you die a lot more often, but dying doesn't really have serious negative consequences. 
You can tell the time of the day by the position of the sun in the sky, and I, I really like that about it. It's a lot... Or it's, I should just say it's very, very easy to tell what time of day it is. Now, really what I'm looking for is a tall tree, because... Oh, man, that is a nice mushroom find right there. I'm going to be fine for health. This is, going to, this is going to allow me to do a lot of exploring early on in the game. I'm looking for a tall tree, because if you've noticed, or you haven't noticed by now, if you just hammer away with your axe at the bottom of a tree, you can chop down the entire tree in one go and get all of the wood from it. Which is awesome, because it saves you uh, a lot of time. But I've only really found short trees so far, although these ones are okay. Well, you see I've encountered a blue slime now. Blue slimes are actually just more powerful versions of red, of, uh, of uh, green slimes. And I'm actually encountering a lot of them. So let's just back up here. I'm going to get some more wood. I'm going to get enough at this point to establish a house for myself, actually. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to hammer away at the bottom of this tree, which should also allow me to kill this slime, or at least keep it from coming after me. And actually, because of all those mushrooms that I harvested, I can actually afford to take uh, quite a lot of damage right now. What I should be doing, as soon as I chop down, let's say, this tree right here, building myself a workbench and developing a sword so that I can cut these slimes down even faster. So let's kill this one, we'll kill his brother, and then we'll actually let's just eat this mushroom, get this guy out of here. Come on, buddy. Really? Slime party already? It, the developers actually have a Let's Play of this game themselves, and they say one of the things that they're going to change as things go on is uh, the spawn rate of the slimes, because things can get bad pretty fast. But it's good, because the more slimes you get, the more uh, gel you get, so the more torches you can make. And thus, the further you can explore. So I'm actually I'm going to make myself a workbench, and this is where you're going to see that crafting is a little bit different. So I'm just going to hit the escape key, and I can see all of the things that I can make on my left side here. So I'm going to click on a workbench, you can see that takes 10 wood. I'm going to drag that up to the zero width slot in my inventory, and I'm going to place it down right here. And now that I've made that, I have a lot more items that I can make. But we're going to start by making just a sword so I can protect myself more ably. And I'll slot that into my mushroom slots. Mushroom slot, that doesn't sound good. And I'm going to chop down these trees a little bit more. And once I get more wood, uh, I'm going to be able to build myself a nice little house here. And once I build the house, I can explain to you... Uh, that, you know, not all of the, the things that look like decorations or decorative things for your house, like chairs and tables, actually are. They actually serve a pretty useful purpose. So, I'm going to get some more wood, pick up a mushroom, and eat it. Uh, and then I'm going to start building my house. So, the, the main thing you want to do is just make the walls tall enough at the very beginning that slimes can't get in. Oh, come on, get, cut me some break, some slack, guys. I'm not a, a great construction worker here. You can see that my sword does a lot more damage, which is excellent because it takes these guys out a lot faster. And it's going to allow me to actually kill some enemies tonight, maybe, should I choose to do so. I might just choose to go exploring, but we'll see. So I'm going to build myself a pretty shitty little house here, but it's good enough for the first night. I've, I've slept in worse in real life, much less video games. So put it in here. Now, in, uh, in Minecraft, the way that you kept enemies from spawning inside of your house, which is pretty important, was by setting up torches. But the way you do it in this game is a little different. So I'm going to hit escape by the workbench. I'm going to go all the way up here, and I'm going to start making myself some wooden walls. So if I pick up um, a fair amount of those, actually, let's, let's get a lot of those. Maybe 48, that's going to be enough for now. Uh, then we can put those basically as the, the background to our house. And by doing that, we will ensure that no enemies can spawn inside of our house. Again, pretty important. Especially in this game, because there's a lot of enemies that come, and they come pretty fast. This game is... Very, very combat-oriented, but also there's a lot of exploration, too, as you might expect. I'm not sure if I'm doing the best job of uh, covering my house right here, but anyway. I'm doing all right for myself, let's put it that way. So we've got these, got some more wood, let's do that. Box it up so I'll be safe tonight. Good. And let's put some torches down. So I'll hit escape, and the way you make a torch is by combining gel and wood. And one gel plus one wood makes three torches. So I've maxed out on torches there because I ran out of gel, and I'm pretty close to running out of wood, too, actually. But I'll just place a torch in here just so I have a little bit of natural light. Uh, and we're good. Okay. So the reason I actually put those walls up and um, put those torches up, because the torches weren't a necessity, really, is because uh, if I actually furnish this house a little bit, I can get people to show up, and they'll actually be able to sell me things. So there's people like merchants that can come to your house, or nurses. Merchants sell you items. Nurses uh, actually can sell you some health, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to need for that is a table and chair, but before that, probably be good form to get a door. And actually, I don't have enough wood to get a door, so I'm going to have to cut myself out of my own house like the my own house like the dumb ass I am. I'm going to cut myself out of my own ass. I don't even know what that would entail, but it, it probably wouldn't be good. So we'll cut down this tree again. 
Now, every time you cut down a tree, you get two things. You get wood, but you also get acorns. And as you might have expected, when you plant acorns, you get, uh, basically saplings. And those saplings can grow into full trees. And I'm, I'm getting a lot of wood right now because we're actually getting pretty close to sundown when the monsters will actually start coming out. And that's not going to be a good time for me right off the bat. So I'm going to eat a mushroom, regain some health, come down here, and hopefully craft a door before that slime breaks into my house. Place it right here. Alright, good to go. Now, do I have enough room for a table and chair in here? Mmm, could be close, could be close. Let's see. Sometimes it's... You know what, I'm going to play it safe, because sometimes you can't open your door if you've got furniture placed poorly. So I'm going to build myself a little bit longer of a house. Oh, uh, but that's going to take more wood to make the walls. What have I done? I swear to God, if I get goddamn zombies spawning inside my house tonight, I'm going to crap my pants on camera. As we approach the night, uh, one thing I want to point out is that the monsters in this game are fucking scary as hell. Things like, um, you know, giant sandworms that you might see in Beetlejuice or the Tremors movies. That wall placement isn't fantastic, but I'll, I'll deal with it for now. I can probably afford to break down this door, or maybe I can't because it won't. It's cool, I'll, I'll have an internal door that'll separate separate my house from all these other ones that are much more logically designed. I gotta give myself an external door too. Yeah, like really scary monsters, like you'll see tonight there's a... Uh, probably get a lot of zombies and the zombies actually knock on your door. Get out of here buddy, I'm not even afraid of you anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, the zombies will actually like knock on your door and rattle your shutters at night, which is, you know, fantastic, but also frightening. Uh, but also like giant floating eyes that will just come after you, or like, more so they just kind of fly around randomly. Oh, I know how I can get that door back. Let's bust open this top wall here. There we go. And I'll place some more wooden walls, and I'll be able to put a table and chair in here. Alright, so by putting the table and chair in here, once I buy them, give me a chair. Put that in that spot, and give me a table. Oh, I can make a hammer too, but we'll talk about that next video. Give me the table. Put it in my acorn slot. My acorn slot. Again, sounds vaguely sexual, but it was not intended to be. We'll put the table down. I said we'll put the table down here. Excellent. Now a merchant will show up at my house once I have enough coinage. And I'll bring up my thing right here, my inventory. You can see that I only have 14 co copper coins and 8 silver coins. As far as I know from what the developers have said, uh, it takes 50 coins before a merchant will show up. But once he does show up, he'll be able to sell me things, which will be pretty, pretty cool. And the sun's about to go down, and you'll notice something, which is that we've had this same song all day. But once it becomes night, that song changes. And that's a good way to tell, even if you're deep underground, uh, what time of day it is. Because as soon as that song changes, you, you know it's either safe to come out or, you know, I hang, hang low a little longer. So I'm going to eat myself one more mushroom here to get back to full health, because I'll probably fight some enemies as things goes on. But as the sun goes down here, uh, I'm going to embrace the powers of movie editing. Oh, there goes the music change right now. And once something exciting happens, either in my digging or outside of my house, I will show it to you. And I, of course, I'll also show off these monsters, as you can see this zombie coming up to rattle on my house. Ooh, wait a second. What's that? We've got a star that fell right beside my house. Maybe we won't be engaged in the powers of movie editing right now. First, let's just cut down these zombies. And every time you kill one of them, you get some coinage. So we're closer to the merchant coming for us. Here we go. Almost done. Almost done. Let's go back inside the safety of our own house and see what this fallen star is. Restores 20 mana, consumable, disappears after the sunrise. Yeah, so one of the things about this game that's neat is that you'll get those random kind of like environmental things that happen, like a star falling, or I've also had meteors fall. But uh, another thing is that you get mana, so you actually have magic. Unfortunately, I haven't encountered that yet, but we will over the course of this game. There's certain, uh, like, alchemical forces that you can channel, too, so engage in a little bit of chemistry. And actually, one thing I'll show off before I, you know, kind of go on hiatus for the night here until something interesting happens is platforms. So let's go back to our workbench. Do I have a lot of wood? Yeah, I've got a lot of wood. I've always got a lot of wood, baby. So we'll go to this wooden platform, and we'll buy... I only need two of those. Put those in our zero list slot, and we're gonna put those platforms right here. So these platforms are good because I can walk over them, which means I don't uh, constantly jump in my own house to cross this chasm that I created. But if I just hit the down key or the S key, I can fall through, and I can also jump through the other way. So this is kind of how you simulate uh, making mine shafts in this game. Of course, we gotta place torches down here so that things 
stay visible for us, but right now I'm just going to be doing a little bit of mining for materials, and hopefully I'll have enough to build some cool stuff in the morning. Anyway, I'll see you guys when something exciting happens. Alright, so I've mined a little bit, and now I'm coming back up to my house, and I just found out that guy is hanging out in here. What's up, man? You should stay indoors at night. Yeah, no kidding. Thanks for, thanks for dropping by. Did you bring the pizza? Because I brought the beer. Alright. Let's go out and actually fight some of these monsters. You can see we got that floating eye that's chasing me down right now. And zombies. These are really the only two uh, terrestrial night uh, monsters that we'll fight too, too much of right now. But obviously, as the game progresses, you get harder and harder monsters. And I'm not sure uh, what criteria they follow to make that happen, but uh, the longer I've played the game, the more ridiculous monsters I've had coming after me. We should really get some nighttime lighting out here. It, makes, it would make hunting so much easier, considering my... You know, vast astigmatism. How did I miss that mushroom before? That must have just recently grown. If I got a nice mushroom farm outside my house, that would be fantastic. Anyway, it looks like I've vanquished all the monsters, so maybe I can show you something else. I kind of want to put an addition on my house, but I might not have a chance. Oh, that was stone, my bad. Alright. I'll, I'll handle the addition tomorrow. We'll probably end this video soon. So, uh, I didn't find too, too much when I was down there, but I did get a little bit of copper, so you can see... Where's my copper right now? I've got 21 copper ore, but in order to do anything with that ore, uh, I have to create a furnace, although I actually uh, could create a hammer as well. Let's create that hammer first, which is not to do with copper, actually. Sorry for the confusion, that's just wood. Um, but yes, okay, I can make a furnace good, so I'll take the furnace here, put it into my inventory. I wish those zombies would stop knocking at the door. No solicitors! Alright, I'm able to place the furnace, and now if I walk up to the furnace and press escape, I can do stuff with my ore, so I can smelt some copper bars in order to make it useful. So let's smelt ourselves seven copper bars. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do anything with that just yet, but you know, you'll know as soon as I do. We'll learn together, that's the beauty of this. The other thing I can do is make myself a bow and arrow. Again, this is just using wood. And I shouldn't say bow and arrow, I'm just making myself the bow, and I'm going to do that uh, just so that... Uh, when I actually find arrows, I don't have any yet, uh, I can use them. Because arrows are pretty plentiful in pots that you find uh, you know, very deep underground. So right now I'm just going to kind of harvest some zombies because I could use some coins. Uh, i really like to get that merchant to show up. So again, I will see you guys most likely in the morning. And we'll call it quits on our first day of Terraria. I'll do a little bit of a synopsis. Alright, so now the sun has just started to come up. As you can tell by the change in the music. And I've actually uncovered something pretty interesting down here. So if I take out a torch... Should get increased visibility, and you can see that I've unlocked a little bit of an underground jungle going on, pretty close to my base. I'm not going to tackle that this video, that's going to make some nice fodder for next video. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to end the video. This has been the first day of Terraria. I think I covered a lot of the basics for you guys. Gathering materials, building a structure, and making it strong enough so that things don't just, you know, spawn there or bust in. Creating torches, doing a little bit of mining, platforms, making your house nice enough so people will show up, smelting bricks, anyway, you get the idea. Really hope you guys are enjoying the game, and I hope you guys are enjoying the Let's Play so far. This is going to be probably a pretty persistent and long one. I'm hoping to do one to two parts a day, probably. We'll start with one, but, you know, let's not get crazy. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes to start out. This has been the first part of Let's Play Terraria. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.